Well hi, I'm at the Wealdon Downland Museum today near Chichester and there's a wonderful selection of old buildings here to look at. One of them in fact was moved from where I was brought up as a child um, near Penshurst in Kent and it's been moved here and the other buildings, I'll take you around and you'll see some of them, but it's also the weekend of the Autumn Fair at the Wealdon Downland Museum. So there really is lots to see, there's horse ploughing, tractors, threshing and of course they're the bodgers. Well, once again the Sussex pole lavers are in attendance and doing some sterling pole laving as usual and some very nice bowls there being made by Nick. Good morning Harry. Good morning Mike, you alright? No. There's a demonstration of Besson broom making and also actually a broom making race as well and here is a demonstration of lock hewing. And coming up is one of my friends with his round shave tool. Who's next but one here has got a round shave. Right. Terry's got a whole box full of them over there <laughs> in the, the closet office <laughs> shack. Um, so what tool is that? That's going to be a mystery for some people. Yes. Is it used for anything else other than brooms? Um, rake handles, stales. Right, yep. Um, anything that requires a pole. Round, basically, pole. Yeah. I decided to, to go over and have a look at the horse ploughing. On the way over, of course, I pass all these lovely old stationary engines. And I must say, I've often quite liked the idea of owning a stationary engine. It sort of appeals to mechanics and perhaps restoring one. But I think the reality, I mean, they are terribly heavy. And I live in a terraced house, so it will be quite difficult to get them through my house. But, well, I do like them, and they make a nice noise. <laughs> There was a huge variety on display and um, a few sort of data shoots and most of them actually seemed to be around the turn of the century and used for all sorts of farming tasks. I suppose really in the days of horse and carts they really were you know, an extra pair of hands and to get sort of full horsepower out of an engine would be really quite beneficial if you had to say cut up feed for the day. Anyway, here's the horse ploughing and I, I must say these lovely horses pulling ploughs, you realise it's quite difficult to plough here going straight off course and just guiding those horses on quite long reins, it must be very difficult. Some of them were beautifully um, covered in horse brasses and lovely leather work. Here's a close-up, see all the nice halters etc there. My dad used to collect horse brasses so I quite enjoyed having a look at these actually. And um, some fairly good straight furrows. It's lovely seeing the old cottage in the background there. Turning a plough, you think it's going to be okay, but it's really difficult when you watch it. They have to guide those horses round and um, keep that plough in the right position. The ploughs don't go terribly deep compared to modern day ploughs, but um, obviously plenty deep enough to, to do the job. The whole sort of farm area, it's lovely. There's geese here, nice old trees. And here we have one of the old farmhouses. There, there are a few old houses which have been moved from other endangered sites and put up at the museum here. And this is one of them. And they have a little sort of bit of detail about each house and what it looked like in its original location. And you can actually go inside and have a look around. And they've actually made them so fairly authentic inside with nice old period bits of furniture. For example, this one, I really enjoyed looking at some of this nice quality oak joinery, the furniture. So little baby's crib here coming up and very nice little turned tops, well sort of shaped tops I should say on this one. And fairly simple sort of chip carving decoration but very effective. And they'd replicated that on the bed as well. The windows um, were simply, well no glass, it's just a, a shuttered wall. So very cold, but quite effective. They had a pigsty outside and a nice sleepy pig there. There are a nice Sawyer's pit in this woodyard. So the crane would lower the timbers on and then someone could get sawing. <laughs> Top dog and underdog. I wouldn't have thought the most enjoyable work in the world. There's an old rack bench in the woodyard here. How about this for a bandsaw? Probably quite effective, but you can hardly call it compact. I don't think it would fit in my workshop. Nice little selection of coppice crafts going on here, little hurdles and traps and things. 
did a bit of timber framing, a bit of cart repair going on, and a few more hurdles. Quite an interesting brake tool there as well. Here's a nicely stacked charcoal kiln. There we are. These more modern forms were introduced in about 1940 and the charcoal was actually used for quite a few things including soap manufacture and making explosives. Of course I remember charcoal from school days with charcoal twigs for sketching. Um, it's used in filtering and cooking for ovens and um, even nowadays in the computer industry believe it or not and that does seem odd for silica production. Nice little mix here of forge work and woodwork going on and there's a bit of wheel lighting. So a very nice wheel being made up just over there. It's a handsome piece of work. A little bit of modern kit to play in the background. A nice sturdy workbench. Here's a nice traditional farm gate and it's got a nice big cross supporting style that's very nicely done there with a sort of dovetail type joint in the top there. Look at that. A very satisfying bit of carpentry. I do like these old shepherd huts. And this one is particularly nice. It has a nice little stove in it, keep warm. And all the essentials. You've got nice benches with underbench storage and a little table. And then a few little cupboards up there on the wall. And it all looks very cosy with its nice little kettle and cups. You, you'd never be able to collect this number of apples if you did it with care. No, no. Really strange for me because I actually grew up quite near this house uh, before it was moved. So it was dismantled in 1968 and then re-erected in 1972. It was literally about two miles from where I used to live. I love the old buildings these and I think they managed to save them. I mean there was a big reservoir put in where I used to live when I was about 10 years old and I can remember going past the school each day and seeing the reservoir and anyway they had to make space for it with these houses coming out. So they literally dismantled the houses and move them to this site so that they could be preserved. And they are great. I remember the local builder actually as a child he used to make quite a bit of money doing up these houses. <laughs> and I imagine nowadays they're probably worth a lot of money. The walls of this large room really were quite stained black with soot from the fire. Um, the actual fire was right in the middle of the room. And again, no glass in the windows, just the shutters. And of course, no chimney either, so the smoke used to just go up through the top of the roof. But I'm very nice little wooden um, benches here. And I must say, I see this sort of joinery and I think, oh, yeah, quite like to have a go at those sometime. The stairs were chunky, nice bits of pegwork. And again, lovely work in the roof of this building. Look at that. <laughs> quite impressive. The beds are quite basic. I don't think the most comfortable. Here's another one. It's a granary. Um, and again, quite interesting use of elm. I mean, elm nowadays is quite scarce as a wood. But of course, going back in time, it was everywhere, really, before the Dutch elm disease. Very nice seeing this old horse and cart going through. And they were off, I think, to the traction engine crushing to get some more straw for the thatching. There is a very good display of old vintage tractors and quite a lot of these have been ploughing the field and making a pretty good job really, but as you can see, all shapes and sizes. There's a birds of prey display, so there's a hawk and that's a Chilean eagle. They also had things like owls. 
I was quite taken with this display simply as my father used to collect horse grasses and um, had quite a good collection of them and these well remind me of quite a few that he used to have actually and these are the old lead animals of course would be banned nowadays but um, used to be very popular before plastic here's a display of old tools by the historical tool trades association and a really fascinating lot there to have a look through now this is uh, a smithy and it was a lovely picturesque smithy building and there's a blacksmith in there doing some work in fact i think in a minute you'll just about see the forge burning away in one of one of the buildings there's this very interesting display of leaded glass stained glass and having just done some, I was quite interested in this. So they had the lead knife, very similar to the marking knife I was using to cut lead canes. And this is a mould for actually melting lead and then making your own lead canes, or cast lead pigs as they called them. And with these, they actually put them through a mill to like stretch them out and make them thinner and lighter, a bit like the ones that I used. And there's a picture in a minute of the mill. So here's the little mill machine, a bit like a jeweler's mill. Well, here's our proper saw pit building and look at this really is a nice good deep pit nice well supporting cross beams and there are on the back wall are some of the tools of the trade saw ready here for sharpening up and quite a nice working height It'd be quite a long saw to sharpen. I mean, it's a bit longer than that saw I certainly sharpened up. I'd say that one's, well, it's about seven, eight foot, isn't it? Something like that. Well, this was a very attractive mill building which had been rescued and recited at the wheel and downwind and they had the water wheel running and inside the lovely sound once you go into an old mill of all that machinery churning away all those wooden cogs and they were producing flour and um, here's all these sort of inside workings I, I always like old mills there's something about them and perhaps one of my ancestors was a miller I don't know but um, I know I've got blacksmiths and I've got leather workers shoemakers in my family trees that's probably why I like both those things <laughs> but I was my workmanship this sort of thing cutting all those nice little teeth well I'm pleased to see they've preserved a carpenter's workshop and this one looks actually quite cramped really you've got three workbenches and not a huge amount of space between them but quite nicely fitted out with lots of different tools. So numerous boring and sawing and shaving type tools and stacks of moulding planes. Quite a nice display here of window mouldings. And I got done with looking at these when I was making the windows for the new workshop. Well, this is the plumber's shop, of course, they did all sorts of lead work, so including roof lead work as well. Got some lovely old buildings on this site, and this market hall building was another case in point with lovely timber work there and the inset bricks. And you can go inside the building, so it's great fun looking around and seeing what they're like. With this one, it's just a sheer craftsmanship. You see the way those bricks have been inset in in that nice herringbone pattern. Again, lovely roof timbers in this place. They just sort of look so attractive, so it's, it's great they've been preserved. They had a few old shops as well, and here they are, which had also been moved to the site so, so that they could be preserved 
And again, they had them fitted out with a few things. You get a bit of an idea of what they look like. So here you are. You can buy all these items. <laughs> well, at least you could have done years ago when this was a proper shop. I really admired these nice chairs. They've, they've done like a, I suppose, a barrel, sort of Cooper type design, but very simple joinery in some respects, but very well executed. Nice blacksmith hinges on there as well, a nice quarter saw and panels on the front. And it's just sim simple work, but actually very nice quality and very nicely done. Again, this cupboard, it's in some respects quite simple, nicely scratched out panelling, but it is really just beautifully done. It's simple, it's lovely quality oak there, again nice quarter saw and a fairly simple chip carving, but it's just, it just works to me. I really like this sort of furniture. And again, one more of these Cooper chairs which you can see from the back. Looks very cosy sitting there beside the fireplace. Good use of storage actually with those chairs, with little doors underneath. This showed the sort of structure of the building and it peeled away some of the plaster work so you could actually see the lava and how the floor joists also had been put together and a fairly crude use of brick and flint. The doors were a nice simple slab construction and I liked this sliding bolt. Very simple, one could replicate that. They were doing some refatching to one of the houses. Well here we have a magnificent timber bob and it was used to move well fallen trees basically along to the saw pits and this one is well it's massive that wheel must be something like eight foot diameter it is huge I feel quite small by it actually there's the other front wheel so they all came as a pair Well, there's a lovely traction engine doing some freshing and I've actually posted a separate film on this I thought it was <laughs> so captivating anyway I hope you've enjoyed a little tour there of the autumn show and the museum and thanks for watching